Now that we've talked about what data science is, let's spend a little bit more time about talking about how the course will be run. You will need to use Python to successfully complete the programming assignments. Most of the programming assignments will be in the form of Kaggle competitions. You will need to be able to upload your results to a Kaggle website. We'll do a lot of in-class exercises, and so it helps to bring a laptop to class or work with someone who does have a laptop in class. This class, in addition to requiring programming, will use a lot of mathematics, primarily probability, but you will also need to be able to take logarithms, exponents, and understand what it means to have a tangent line to a function. In addition to being able to program successfully in Python, you'll need to be able to upload files to Kaggle, like I said before, manipulate text files, and in general have a strong level of computer literacy. That being said, the algorithms are relatively simple, so you don't need a very deep level of computer programming or uh, data structure knowledge. Since you're watching this online, you've already figured out that the lectures will be your responsibility to view before the class. I'm doing what's called a flipped classroom, and so instead of me lecturing you in the classroom, we'll be working together to understand the material in the classroom. You'll work together in small groups, ask questions, and in general, engage with and understand the material. The classroom sessions will be very important for you to be able to understand the material and successfully complete the homeworks. You'll find links to the videos on the course webpage. Keep up with the course webpage. You will see the homeworks there, you will see the videos there, you will see the readings there. All of these are very important. Keep a close eye on the webpage and use the material there. I mentioned homeworks. Homeworks are due at the end of the week but I am flexible in terms of late days. There are five late days that you can use, no questions asked. You don't need prior permission to use a late day. Throughout the entire semester, you have a total of five late days that you can use however you choose. You can use them all on one late day, or you can use one late day on five different assignments. However, they are late days. They are not late minutes or late seconds. If your homework is 20 minutes late, you have used one late day. So, keep that in mind as you're planning how to use your late days. There will also be a midterm and a final project. We'll talk more about that as those dates get closer. If you have special needs, as outlined in the syllabus, please talk to me at the beginning of the course. If, for example, you need to be excused for a religious observance, or uh, you have special testing needs, you need to tell me about it at the beginning of the class. I cannot stress that you do need to look at the syllabus right now. Look at the syllabus for the breakdown of grades, how your final grade will be computed from the various uh, subsections of the grade. In addition, you'll also find more information about what I'll do if an assignment is late beyond the five late days. Here's the textbook for the course. It's called Think Stats. It's available free online, but you can also buy a physical copy from the bookstore. We'll supplement this reading with other reading uh, from the web and, and other sources. At the beginning of the course, we'll also use a bit of this textbook called Probability to reinforce basic ideas about probability and statistics. Again, it's free online, so you don't need to buy a physical book. It's a useful resource, and we'll be using it at the beginning of the course. We will be using Piazza for almost all course communication. Piazza is a web application created by a University of Maryland graduate. One of the great things about Piazza is that students can remain anonymous. They can post questions publicly, but not have their identity revealed to the other students, or not have their identity revealed to the instructor. Moreover, students can also ask questions privately. So if you have an administrative question, you just want to be visible to the course staff, you can ask that as well. Piazza is very simple to use, and I want you to use that instead of email. Email can get lost. Email doesn't always get to the right person. If you post to Piazza, all of the right people will see it. Piazza will also be a part of the participation grade. So, one very easy way to make sure that you get good participation points in the course is to use Piazza extensively both for asking and answering questions. Because this is a technical course, you will often have technical problems. For example, in your programming assignments, that you're having trouble trying to solve, 
you need to provide enough information so that people can help you. There are some basic things that will help people answer your question efficiently. Giving basic information like what kind of operating system you're using, what version of Python you're using, what version of various packages you're using. This is simple information that can help diagnose problems. You also need to explain what you think should have happened when you did something. And then you also need to explain what happened instead. This mismatch between what should have happened and what did happen is often informative, and explaining that effectively can help us help you. The last thing that I want to talk about is often the trickiest, and it's important to give a minimal example that generates the error that you're seeing. For example, as a professor, I should be able to replicate the problem that you're having very simply. So I should be able to take the code that I provide you for a homework assignment, do one or two things, and then create exactly the same error that you're seeing. This is called a minimal example, and this helps me reproduce the error that you're seeing. And I can see exactly what the problem is on my own machine. I can adjust things uh, so I can find what a solution would be, and then give you appropriate hints. If I'm unable to reproduce the problem that you're seeing, I don't have a full understanding of what went wrong. If you've tried a million different things, and any one of them could have caused a problem, I won't be able to help you, because I don't know all of the things that you've tried. In class, I'd like to be able to get to know you a little bit better, and so I'll, I'll ask you to briefly introduce yourselves, but uh, allow me to do that now on this video. Uh, so my name is Jordan. Please call me Jordan. I'm an associate professor in uh, not only the iSchool, but also in computer science, uh, the University of Maryland Institute for Advanced Computer Studies, and the Language Science Center. I was previously a professor at the University of Colorado, but before I went to Colorado, I was uh, previously at the University of Maryland in the iSchool, where I was a professor for four years. And I was actually part of the committee, and, and chaired the committee, that created the undergraduate program at the iSchool, so I'm really excited to be teaching a course in the undergraduate program at the iSchool. This is the first time teaching this class, but I, I've taught a similar course both in the iSchool and in the computer science department at the University of Colorado. I'm originally from Colorado, that's where I was born and where most of my family live, but I grew up in Iowa in a small town called Keokuk. I uh, went to undergrad in California and to grad school in New Jersey. I had uh, brief jobs in between uh, working at a dictionary in Berlin, and working on Google Books in New York City. I also went to high school in Arkansas, but I identify less with Arkansas than either Iowa or Colorado. One thing that often confuses people is that my university ID is Ying, Y-I-N-G. That's my uh, family name, uh, so my wife and daughter have that name. I use that for family business, and uh, that's also my University of Maryland ID. So if you see Ying, that's me. Uh, I know it's confusing, I'm sorry. Boyd Graber is the name that I publish under, but I really don't like to be called that. Please call me Jordan. I know that some people perhaps have a hard time uh, calling professors by their first name. If you would like to be a little bit more formal, uh, Professor Jordan is fine by me. Jordan is also fine. JBG works as well. In addition to teaching, I do research. Some of the research that I work on that may be of interest to you is on creating systems that can answer questions. So we have a system that can play trivia games, and uh, we uh, beat Ken Jennings at a game called Quiz Bowl, as well as uh, world experts at Quiz Bowl. I also work on clustering, and so say that you have a large document collection, how can you break that into groups of documents that make sense to each other, and how can you do that very quickly and with a human in the loop? I also work on how to create computer systems that can aid in interpretation. So, for example, you have a diplomatic meeting where one person speaks Chinese, one person speaks English. How can you create a computer algorithm that can help them communicate with each other as quickly and efficiently as possible? And how can you create a computer algorithm that works with an expert human who knows both languages to do that as effectively and efficiently as possible? I also look at how politicians change the way that they speak based on their political ideology. So, for example, looking at polarization within the Republican and Democratic parties in the United States, and seeing how that is reflected in language. 
in class, I'm hoping to get to know a little bit about you, and I'm also uh, hoping that we can get started on some of the computational infrastructure in the course, so please bring your laptop so we can try out and see if Python is working for you.